Ayan. So, hi everyone. Keep comfy in your chairs. Grab a snack because we'll be starting in a few minutes by 1 p.m. And also, please uh, take a look at our chat panel for our attendance form so that you can join our raffle for later and also get a special token that will be released later on on our webinar. Also, please remind your friends if may naka register pa. Please remind them to join our meeting because we will be starting at 1 o'clock p.m. So, see you soon.
Ayan. So, 1 o'clock na. So, uh, hello again for, to everyone sa mga nakajoin. So, if you have friends na hindi pa na kakajoin ng ating webinar, so you can also invite them para ma-remind if ever nag-register sila. Or also, uh, you have other friends na gusto talagang sumali for our webinar. So, Again, hi everyone. Before we start our webinar, there will be a few reminders to take note during the webinar. So first, put your microphone on mute and your camera off to avoid program interruption. Two, strictly no commenting or chatting foul dem and demeaning words during the session. And three, dress appropriately if camera needs to be turned on. If you have any questions regarding the event or topic, you may use the chat feature of the webinar. So, this webinar will be recorded, therefore, we have a data privacy notice flashed in your screens. By joining this event, you agree to this data privacy notice. We will also be recording this event, online event and will be taking pictures and screenshots for A. Documentation for the event and relevant matters. B. Sharing images of the event to different platforms not limited to social media posting. And last, live video feed via Microsoft Teams and other social media platforms. We'd also like for you guys to answer our attendance form for you to get a chance to win at the raffle later on in this webinar and receive also a special token to be revealed later in the webinar. So our moderators will post our uh, attendance form in our chat panel and on the screen. So let us formally start. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm welcoming you to our webinar for today entitled Online Classes Essentials, organized by yours truly, APC Microsoft Community. I'd like to introduce myself first. So my name is Seth Kendall Menard, the president of the APC Microsoft Community, at ako yung magiging host niyo for today. So kamusta naman lunch niyo? Sana naging masap yung ulap nyo kasi dahil need nyo mag-prepare for this webinar. So mapapatanong ka, what is online classes essentials? Ano bang essential sa pag-aaral mo sa APC in this new environment? When I first started my online classes journey, it's weird. Nagbago ang requirements mo, ano need mo sa pagpasok, and other things you need to face uh, in our face-to-face -face classes. And those questions will be answered by our lovely speakers for today. To formally start our event, I'd like to welcome Ms. Jan Lorin Manrique, our beloved director for events and programs, and as Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, Beta, for the welcoming remarks. Can I get an applause react from the audience? Yeah. So hi everyone, I am Jana Manrique and it is my pleasure to welcome you all to the online classes essential webinar. Now, di ko na mapatagalin tong part ng event na to, pero I just wanted to say how thankful we are to our teachers and org directors who helped make this event happen. And to our speakers na makikilala nyo rin maya maya, na willing i-share yung knowledge nila sa atin ngayon. And especially to all the students who are here right now. So joining us today means a lot, especially since ito yung first event namin this year and it was organized by APC MSE's newest set of officers. Now, we organized this event with the grade 11 and freshmen in mind because we know how nerve-wracking it can be for students who are new to their environment. So for the next few hours, our hardworking speakers in APC MSE will be introducing to you the different Microsoft technologies and tools that us APC RAMs need to get through the online school year. And they will also be sharing some tips and tricks on how to dig digitally organize your files and school activities. So with that, I hope that by the end of this event, we would have helped you acquire the knowledge you need to navigate the online settings of Asia Pacific College. So once again, thank you everyone and I hope you enjoy the rest of the event. Yeah, so thank you for that insightful session about uh, for that wonderful speech, Ms. Manrique. So how about we start our webinar? 
As you can see, we have two topics to be shared to you by our officers in APC MSC, the Essentials and Digital Organization 101. What's the topic about? Let's hear it from our first speaker for this event. And now let me introduce Ms. Kyle Dumbrique, the Vice President of APC Microsoft Community, the OIC President of GISA, and currently a Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador, GOAT status. Again, Ms. Kyle Dumbrique. Can we get some applause react from the audience? Hello guys, um, can someone confirm if you can hear me clearly and if you can see my screen? Um, hello, so uh, di pa pala naka-share screen mo. So, pa-share na lang ang screen mo, Kyle. Ayan. Ayan. Um, can you see it? Number? Ayan, yes. Thank you, Kyle. So, welcome guys to the first session of our online process essentials, which is the essentials. So before we begin, let me introduce myself. I am Kyle Dumbrique, currently a third year college student here in APC. With the course BS Computer Science with specialization in cybersecurity and forensics. I am the current vice president of APC Microsoft Community, a gold Microsoft Learn student ambassador, and the current officer in charge for president of Junior Information System Security Association APC chapter. So if you have any questions or you want to reach out on me, you may do so at my email address ksdumbrique at student.abc.edu.ph or at kyledumbrique at studentambassadors.com. Our school life has just been different. New environment, new communication, and something unfamiliar. What is evident in our school years would be how classes are conducted. That's where online classes was introduced. Everyone knows by now that online classes is somehow different between schools or colleges. So the question is, what's different in APC? How do we conduct online classes? Let's get to the basics. If you already attended online classes, you should already know what asynchronous and synchronous are. So um, mainly, Asynchronous sessions means you won't be live through online meetings or have to face your professors during class, but you have something to do during that time period. This could involve your modules, handouts, activities, videos, or even projects. In contrast, synchronous means that everyone has to attend a live meeting with your professors and your classmates. This might be meetings, collaboration with groups, announcement of activities, lessons, or even quizzes and exams. With that aside, you, must ask, you might ask, what's different in APC? The difference here is the apps that we use. If you don't know, APC is actually one of the Microsoft showcase, showcase schools in the Philippines. The college mostly uses Microsoft applications in work or in studies. That's why Microsoft Teams is used on all synchronous and asynchronous sessions in our online classes. But that doesn't mean that Microsoft Teams is the only app that you should focus on. There are multiple Microsoft apps and APC websites you need to take note on. Let's start with the Microsoft 365. One of the main benefits of APC is that since you are part of the Microsoft Showcase School, you are provided a licensed Microsoft account linked to this school. You may notice that you already have a Microsoft account. Always remember your email address as it should benefit you from your whole stay in APC. The format of the student's email address here in APC is the first letter of your first name, followed by your middle initial, then your last name. And of course, at student.apc.edu.ph. If you have a sibling or a family member who used to be a student or is currently a student in APC and you happen to have the same initials, your email address will get a number after your name to easily differentiate the account. For example, the account of your older sibling is fmlas at student.apc.edu.ph 
Then you will have the same initials. You will have the FM last two as your email address. And eventually, when another one of your sibling with the same initials will enroll again in APC, they will then have FM last three as their email address and so on. If you have a Microsoft license account, it means that you are provided an updated version of Microsoft Apps, which is the Microsoft 365. You can install the latest version of every Microsoft app because of this. If you don't have any clue to how to download and install it, just go to the www.office.com and sign in with your APC email account. You can see there the install office button and just install it. It's simple with barely and complex instructions. After installing, you may opt to install all the other Microsoft apps, including Word, Outlook, Excel, and PowerPoint. Office 365 is basically a package of all Microsoft technologies, so there's less hassle in getting all the apps you need. So I will show you here how to download it. In your browser, just go to office.com. And then you will be redirected to a login screen and then sign in using your APC email account. As you can see here, we have the button install office. Just click there and the office 365 apps. Click run to start installing and then log in to your APC email account to automatically have the apps for free. So that's it. You already have the apps in your device. If you have any problems in trying to install your Microsoft apps, just visit our official Facebook page to check out the installation guide and other necessary information if you have problems with your email. So after installing everything you need, what now? Let's start with your main hub for online classes, which is the Microsoft Teams. As you can see here, Microsoft Teams has a lot of features. So let me show you the Teams. So this is the main environment of the app. As you can see, we have here at the top right side is the icon for my account. So if I click on it, you will see here the details. So for me, I can see my name, my email address, and then my status. Some of the professors here in APC actually require its students to have a profile picture so that they can see how you look like. So if you want to change your profile picture, just click on it. And then this will show. So you can just upload picture and then it will automatically have your photo in it throughout all your Microsoft 365 apps. Next is here in the, as you can see, I am currently presenting, but you can actually change it here. If you want to be set as available or busy, or you, if you do not want to be disturbed, or even if you want to be appeared as offline, even if you are available, ayun. you can also reset your status here and set out the duration of your status. Next is the status message. You can actually put here what you want people to know about you. For example, you are away and you want them to just reach you out through your email. You can just put it in here. And that's it. Next is the icon here. So we can see here the settings. So in the settings, you can actually customize your um, app. So if you want to have the default theme, high contrast or dark, and then you can also change the layout. And you can just explore these different settings on your own time. Next is the keyboard shortcuts. We have here different keyboard shortcuts used in the app. So if you want to get familiarized on it, you can just go here and see the different shortcuts that you can utilize. Next is we should always keep our app updated. So just click on the check for updates. And then here, as you can see, it will just automatically install and update while you are in the app. And that's it. You can now be updated in the app. So as you can see also here, in the left side corner of 
the app, we have the activity, chat, teams, assignments, and so on. So let me start showing you the activity. So here in the activity, we can actually see here the feed and my activity. So in the feed, all the notifications you have in your app will be inside here. So for example, someone tagged me in a comment or someone posted in a team that I am currently in, or if someone posted some assignment, so I can see it here. This is on the My Activity. So here in the My Activity, you can actually see everything that you're doing in the app. So for example, here, I have commented something in the general channel. I can see it here. Next is you can also filter the notifications that you see here. So for example, I want to see every assignments that I have. I can just type here assignments. And then as you can see, na filter lahat yung mga assignments. Next is the chat. So for the chat here, it actually works like um every messaging app that you have. So you can create here new chats. Just click the icon. And then enter the name of the people you want to chat with. So for example, you don't know the email address of the person you're going to chat with. Um, as long as you know their name, you can actually do that. So for example, I want to chat a friend of mine. For example, Jan Noreen Manrique. And then I do not know her email. I can just, but I know her, that this is her. I can just click on it and then I can now start our chat. That is, you can also create a group chat. By just um, adding people in it, for example, Jan and Seth, I want to create a group chat with them. Just click here the arrow and then create a group name. And then that's it. If you start a message here, yeah, ayan, nagawa na yung group chat. And you can also use here the video call and the audio call. And if you want to add more, you can actually add people here. So uh, uh, next is the teams. Usually, this is the first thing that we see or look out for if we are go going in the teams. So you can see here, we have two different options, the your teams and the hidden teams. So here in the your teams, this is currently the teams that I want to see. So for example, I no longer want to see the teams here that GISA ATC and I want to hide it so that it's not cluttered. I can just click on it and then wala na siya dito. However, nandito pa rin siya sa hidden teams. And then if I want to show it again, just hover on the options and then click show. Um, next is in the join or create team. So if I click on that, I can actually create a team. So to create your own team, just click on it and then put your team name, description, and then choose whether you want it to be a private or a public team. So in a private team, only team owners can add members. However, in the public, anyone in the organization can actually join. And then if you click next, it will just create the team. As you can see here, these teams here are actually a public one. That's why any one of us can actually see and join it. However, yung mga private classes natin is actually set to be private. That's why only our professors can add, add, add us to that. Or for example, they did not add you, but they have given you a code to join the team. You can enter the code here and then just click join team and then you will automatically be joined in the team. Next is in the setting. We can actually um, manage the teams. So if we put click that one, we can actually see here every teams that I belong to and the people in it, ayan, description and the type. We can also see here the analytics, like how active the teams are. And so we can see how many people in it, active users, the guests, and so on. Next is we can also filter it. So for example, here in my team, I chose to see all. However, if I only want to show the classes that I'm currently in, 
Si, ito yung mga currently enrolled classes ko. And in the other is actually just um extracurricular activities that I am in. For example, I want to so ito sa class kunwari is since dev. We can actually see here the the team's name which is since dev and then I have here the class notebooks, assignment and grade and also the different channels. So first is the channels. Yung general channel is actually a default one. So if someone created a new team, the general will be the first what thing that you see, and then you can just add different channels if you want to. In our classes, professors sometimes create our own class notebook. So here in the class notebook, it is actually in a one note, and then your professor will create it for you and there. So I will discuss this later on. Next is for the assignments. The assignments here, we can, as you can see, it is um, the differentiated by assigned and completed. So yung assigned, dito mo makikita lahat yung mga na-assigned na um, assignments for this class. And then for the completed, this is everything that you have already passed. Next is sa grades. So dito sa grades, makikita mo lahat ng grades mo sa mga activities or assignments na binigay sa inyo ng prof mo. So, nakasummarize na siya dito. Ayan. For the general or any different channels, we can actually create a conversation. So, for here, sa yung conversation, we can just put here a different, um, just type anything that you want to start a conversation thread. And if you want to customize it, we can actually put here a subject. So I suggest that if you will create your own conversation, just put a subject so that people will know what you're talking about. And then here, you can just add different um, attachment. And then you can also add emojis and GIF and also the Microsoft Forms. So here, the Microsoft Forms is like a poll. So you can just put questions and then different options that they could choose from. And then you can also enable or disable multiple answers. And you also have the option to share the results automatically after voting or if you want them to keep their responses anonymous. And then if you click save, magi start na yung questions and then people in the, your channel can actually start answering the forms. Also here in the new conversation, we also have here the announcement. So the announcement just added a headline. And here in the headline, you can actually choose an illustration. For example, I want to use this illustration. So I am picture. Also, you can also upload your own image. So for example, I want online classes essentials. Ayan. So, may sarili siyang header, no? So, parang nako-customize mo siya. Next one is here that everyone can reply and you and moderators can reply. You can actually choose which one you want to use. So, in everyone can reply, as it said, um, anyone in the team can actually reply to your thread. And next is for the you and moderators, only the moderators in the teams can actually reply to this thread. Next is for the post in multiple channels. So here, as you can see, the default one is eh, kung saan ka naglagay ng conversation, dun siya mapopost. However, if you click on post in multiple channels and then click on the select channels and then I click, for example, the APC MSC general update, dun siya mapopost. So this conversation will be posted both in the since the general channel and the APC MSC general channel. Additionally, for example, this thread is actually a very important one and you want everyone to see it right away and be notified. You just have to put the mark as important and then there we go. Uh, no notify na yung mga tao dito to see this thread and then I will just discard it for now. Next is you can actually start your own meeting. So if here in the top right side we have the option to meet now and schedule a meeting 
So if we click meet now, um, a meeting will automatically start right away. However, if you choose on schedule a meeting, you can add here the title of your meeting, the people you want to attend, set the date and time of your meeting, and then just put on a date. Put on your details. So later on, I will discuss more about the meetings. Next is the channels here. For example, the channel has a lock icon, as you can see here. That means that only people who are added on that particular channel can see the channel. However, if it is not locked, anyone in the teams can actually see the channels. Next is here, we have also have a different assignment. So yung pinakita ko kanina is, na assignment is for that particular teams lang. However, here, we can see all of my assignment in every classes. Or I can also just filter it. So for example, I only want to see my assignments or art in te. Ayan, makikita mo siya dito. And just clear the filter and then babalik na siya sa all classes. So if I click here in the assignment, we can actually see here the instructions on what your professor wants you to do. And then you can just attach your work by clicking attach. And then you can choose whether you want to attach from OneDrive, a link, or you can upload from this device. You can also see here the points. So kung ilan yung points na gustong makukuha mo dito sa activity. So this activity is actually worth 100 points. Another one that you should know is the due and close. Actually, ito kasi wala siyang close. Wait, uh, maghanap ako. For example, here, meron siyang due and then closes, right? So, yung pinagkaiba ng due and closes is that sa due, it means that this is your deadline. However, if hindi ka pa nakakapasa sa deadline, pwede ka pa rin magpasa pero late ka na. However, sa close, kapag lumagpas ka na sa closing date, hindi ka na pwede magpasa because uh, mawawala na yung assignment na option na ito. So, hindi ka na makakapagpasa. So, just take note on the dates that your professor set, the, set for your assignment. Ayan, kung titignan nyo dito, wala siyang close. So, kahit late na, pwede pa rin akong mag-turn in. Next naman is completed. So, parang yung kanina lang. Dito sa completed is makikita mo lahat ng na-complete na na activities. Ayan. Next is for the calendar. So, here in our calendar, we can see all of my meetings. So, as you can see here, um, I have different meetings. And so, if someone invited you to a meeting, I suggest that you respond to it. Like, if you want to attend it, just click the yes. Or if you don't want to attend the meeting, you can also click the no. So, itong mga ganito yung color actually is na-accept ko na as you can see. However, pag may parang ganyan na dotted lines, it means that hindi pa ako nag-accept uh, or nag-decline. So, it actually also means tentative kinda. Pero makikita pa rin siya dito. Unless I declined it, mawawala na siya dito sa calendar ko. Ayun. So, to add this to your calendar, for example, your professor, um, nag-invite siya ganito, I can just click on the view meeting details, and then merong lalabas dito ang option, and then just choose if you want to accept it or not. Additionally, kapag nag-meeting invite sila, uh, nag-notify siya both sa MS Teams and sa Outlook. So, ayan, just accept it kapag para mag-reflect siya sa calendar niya. So, just like din kanina, pwede ka rin mag-create dito ng meeting or meet now. So, sa meet now, mag -meet, uh, mag-set ka lang ng meeting right away. And then, here naman, sa new meeting, mag-schedule ka ng meeting. So, just like din kanina. And then, pwede ka rin mag-set ng webinar and live event. Next is sa calls. You can actually see here your history sa mga calls. So, for example, here, someone called me. And then, ayan. Makikita mo yung history ng mga calls nyo. Next is sa files. 
So dito sa files, makikita mo actually lahat ng recent files na binuksan mo using the app. So ayan. And then, next one that I'm going to talk to you about is the meeting. So knowing that synchronous session requires you to be live, of course, meeting is utilized. Now, there's two ways in setting a meeting as I've told you. The meet now and schedule a meeting. So if you already you are already invited in the meeting and you already decided to join, there's a window that will place you to the meeting. Before that, it will let you set up your device in the meeting. You can turn on or off your camera, add a background filter, change your audio, and turn it on or off. Now, always be reminded to always turn off your camera and microphone when you first join the meeting. If there are actually less than four people in the meeting, it won't automatically turn off your camera and mic. Otherwise, it will notify you on how many people are in the meeting and automatically turns off your camera and phone. This prevents you in interrupting. Now, what if you're logging in your laptop or PC and you want to use your phone instead? You can actually transfer yourself to your phone to avoid leaving the, me the meeting. This also helps if you have a broken microphone on your headset, earphones, or device mic. You can use your phone as your microphone by adding the phone to the meeting and muting yourself in the laptop or PC. So in here, if you click the add device, you will join without audio on this device and keep your other device in the meeting. However, if you choose the transfer to this device, your current meeting in, this in the device for example, your laptop will be ended, ended and then you will just join in your phone. And once you finally set up yourself for the meeting, let's talk about what you will see in the meeting. What is evident there is the, the title on the top, the duration of the meeting on the top left, the people in the meeting in the middle, and the leave button. Let's talk first about the meeting chat. By clicking the message bubble, a meeting chat will appear at the right. It will also show every notification happening in the meeting, such as when it started, if someone joined, if someone left, or when it ended. Most of the conversation would happen here, if we're going to be honest. There's multiple functions here, such as messaging a picture, a GIF, an att attachment, or even a reaction for the messages. Now, by pressing the first button in the list, it will show the participants in the meeting. If there's a chance that someone in the meeting is not in the meeting, you can actually invite them when they're not on the list. So you can just click here the share invite and then you will have the meeting invite and then just send it to them. What's the difference between the presenter and attendee? When you are a presenter, you are capable to do every function such as muting, clicking, and sharing your screen. But as an attendee, a presenter can limit your functions. There's instances that they can terminate your unmute button, your share screen button, your camera, or even the chat. Take note that as a presenter, you can disable functions or even spotlight them, making their screen or camera bigger than the others. You can also mute people or kick them off the meeting. Maybe you're a presenter and you can. this means that you can share your screen or even a specific window. The difference here is that sharing your screen can track everything you do. Unlike sharing a specific window, can only show that specific app. Let's say you're showing a PowerPoint presentation. First, slide show your presentation and click Alt tab. Then go to share screen and click window. And click your slideshow. In this way, even if you use different application, while your slideshow is not minimized, it avoids showing your whole screen. You can also include your computer sounds if you're showing a video or music. Beside the chat button, a new feature was also added called reactions. This is similar to reacting to a message in the meeting chat, 
but the reactions appear in the meeting panel. You can see what reactions they are implying. The best thing here is the hands up button. This actually notifies everyone you raise your hand, and if you're the presenter, it means that they're calling out your attention. But it can also be used in different ways. You can ask them if they don't have any questions, they can raise their hands. This is a great feature to know attentiveness and getting an answer other than saying or chatting a faster way. Ayan. Another new feature is the breakout room located next to the reaction button. This basically lets you separate the participants in the room to have mini meetings. This is great for conducting group sessions in the class where they can talk privately and you, as a presenter, can enter the rooms manually. You can set also a timer for when the, the breakout room should end, and it will automatically put everyone in the general meeting. This is somehow similar to the channel, but if you want to attend the separate meeting pass, you can do it here. Ayan. Another new feature is here, so you can see here that we can assign participants and then create rooms, add room, and then just add the people that you want to add here. Next to the breakout rooms are the miscellaneous options. What I will focus here is the meeting notes, gallery or together mode, focus, background effects, and the start recording. First is the meeting notes. This will take you to the Teams window, separate from the meeting window, and will let you take down notes easily. This will record inside the meeting, so you can go back to the previous meeting notes. Next would be the gallery. It basically lets you customize your meeting screen, such as getting more people on the screen, or put them in a virtual classroom setup. This mimics your face-to-face -face experience, and it's also great for photo ops. Focus is similar to Spotlight, where the meeting is focused on a person or the screen. Next is you can apply background effects on your camera. There are, there are multiple filters already, such as blur and also stock photos. If you don't like any of those features, you can add your own background. Maybe if you just want to check how it looks, you can actually just preview it. And once you're ready, you can apply and let it turn on your video. The last here is the recording. If you're the presenter, you can automatically record your meeting in the options. But sometimes you forget to do it, so you can do it manually. You'll notice that beside the meeting time, a red dot will appear, notifying the meeting is being recorded and a drop-down notification will show in everyone's screen. This would include the privacy policy also. If you're an attendee, you can click the start recording, but the presenter must allow the recording, which they will be notified if someone tries to start the recording. Once stopped, you can actually view the recording in the conversation thread and in Microsoft Stream. The last here is the here, so you can see the recorded meeting and then you can just click on it and then you will be redirected to the video and it is also notified in your outlook as you can see here and then just click on go to your video now and then you can watch it on stream take note that in the meeting you can actually check who attended the meeting when they joined or when they left the meeting reminder though just because they left and joined again, it can mean different things. Either a student has bad connections or they had to switch devices. So as you can see here, your professors can actually see who joined the meeting. When you joined it, so ayan, nakikita natin yung date and time and the duration of your stay in the meeting. So that's it for MS Teams. Ano, Andiyan pa ba kayo? Hit the, any reactions guys? before we proceed to our next topic. Ayan. Next is for the email, which is for Outlook. Ayan. So as you stay in APC, one of the most used apps aside from Microsoft Teams is actually the Microsoft Outlook. 
Outlook is an MS Apps for emails. In ABC, you can encounter multiple emails for different information. Some could include an invitation for a new upcoming event, an update or request for formal documents, announcement regarding APC matters or academic matters, meeting information when an invite has been sent, or a formal discourse discussing a particular topic that is informal for a chat in Microsoft Teams. The emails will actually be filtered into two groups, focus and others. Focus groups contains emails that requires your reply or even directed to you. Meaning, focus emails are important emails. The others groups contains most of the time unimportant, such as LinkedIn suggestions, replies in Microsoft Teams, and other emails that doesn't require you to reply or to see. Not only that, you can use your email to contact an office or person formally, invite others to an event or research, request an academic document, inform unnecessary personnel, may it be a complaint or issue regarding your stay here, or even inquire about certain processes such as registration and enrollment. So here in our office hub, we can actually have, you can see here the Outlook. So if we click on it, I will be redirected to my Outlook. Ayan. So here, we can actually see my, ac my account. So, and dito yung name ko and then yung email ko. And then we also have here settings at the top side. And then we can customize the way it looks like. Additionally here, in that settings, some important thing that you should know is the email signature. So in the email signature, um, here as you can see, I have checked the automatically include my signature on new messages that I compose and I forward or reply to. This means that in every email that I make, this signature will be included. So why is this important? This is important so that you will no longer have to repeatedly put your information when you create an email. So some important things that you should put is, of course, your name, your information, and then your contact number. Aside from that, so that my e signature will not look too dull, I added pictures. So if you want to add pictures, you can just click here, the insert picture in line, and then just choose your photos that you want to include. And so as for me, I put here the APC logo and then my badge as a Microsoft Learn Ambassador. And then just click save. And then masa save na siya. So I will show you an example. So here, if I create a new message, I will click on it. And dito na agad yung signature ko. So in creating an email, we have here the two. So that means that this is this will be our main recipient. For example, I want to send an email to Jan. I will just click here. And for the CC, which means carbon copy, for example, this um, Ayan and ha I have created something and and then I want her to be notified that I already passed the, I already sent this email to Jan. So, ayun. Next is for the add a subject. I suggest that every time you will create an email, you should always add a subject because as we all know, everyone here is actually busy and then sometimes the first thing that they will look at is the subject and they will judge there if that subject is really important or not. So as you can see, for example, here, I have an email that actually have no subject, so I won't know what this is about. And then, for example, here, Miss Ria um, sent a message and I don't even have to look at the message to know what it is about. Because I can already see that her email is all about AWS Academy Student Ambassador. So next is um napunta siya sa trap. So for example, nag message ka and then hindi mo pa siya na send, mapupunta siya sa drop. So for example, I have already created here my email. I can actually choose whether to send it now or send it later. So if I choose send, 
it will automatically be sent right away. However, if I choose send later, which is the call feature, I can actually set up when I want it to be sent out. So for example, I want this email to be sent out on Monday at 8 a.m. And then I will click send. See, kapag wala kang subject, manonotify ka rin. Because subject is really important. Pero as a sample, for example, right now. And then napunta rin siya dito sa draft. And then you can see here, this message is scheduled to send on Monday at 8 a.m. And kung nga rin nagkamali ka, you can actually just cancel it. And then re-edit it and then send it again. Also, dito, we can actually add some attachment. So just click on the attachment icon here. And then just browse for your your um, files and then add it there. You can also add pictures, emojis, and GIF, and so on. So right now, I will just discard it, delete it, and... Also here in the inbox, as I told you a while ago, we have here the focus and the other, which I have already explained. We can also here in the focus, for example, we can actually filter the emails that we receive. So I can just click here. If you want, I want to see every email that I have not yet read, I can actually choose here and read. And any other things. Also here in the left side, I can actually choose to see if I want to see my inbox, my drafts, set items, and so on. We can also actually even pin our email. So for example, this email is very important to me and I want to look at it at some other time. And para hindi siya matabunan, I will just pin on it and then it will automatically be pinned here at the top. So, ayan. Parang pag gusto nyo makita agad yung emails, ipin nyo na lang and then andito na siya sa top ng focus email nyo, inbox. Next, here is the calendar. We actually have a calendar in the Outlook. So, the difference nito sa Teams calendar is actually the different um, meetings that I can show here. So, for example, in the left side, I can actually check here if I want to see the Philippine holidays, the birthdays, the calendar here of the teams. And then I can also add um, my other calendar for my different account. For example, here in people's calendar, and I have here the Kyle Dumbrique. This is actually my calendar for my other account, which is in Microsoft Learn. So, parang nag nagsisync na siya dito, so I don't have to look at it nasa kabilang account. So, nandito na siya lahat sa Outlook calendar ko. And then also, we can see here, kapag naka highlight siya, naka box siya dyan, it means that I have already accepted the invite. However, if parang wala yung box, normal lang na fun, ganyan, it means that hindi ko pa siya ina-accept pero na-receive ko na yung invite. So, that's it for the calendar. Ayan. Kaya pa ba? Hindi naman information overload. <laughs> React, guys. Ayan. Kasi next topic na tayo. Which is OneNote. Na na-mention ko rin kanina. Ayan, OneNote. This, uh, yung OneNote is another important one because sometimes your professor will put you will create a class notebook for you and then andun lahat ng modules nyo and then yung course pack, dun din nila minsan nilalagay. And then also, you can have your own one note for note taking and the organization of your notes. Ayan. Here, back tayo dito. In the hub, we have here the one note. So just click on it. And then dito ka mag -re redirect So here in our one note, we can actually see here the different notebooks that I have. So, meron dito mga recent, my own notebooks, and then mga notebooks na na-share sa akin, if meron man, and then sa class notebooks. 
So, dito sa class notebooks, ito yung mga notebook na ginawa ng professors natin. So, for example, I have here the CAD one notebook. I can see here that this is the CAD one notebook. And then, I have here the sections and the pages. So, dito sa sections, makikita natin itong welcome, handouts, which is set by our professor, and then the collaboration space. Here in the collaboration space, um, everyone can actually access this and edit it. And, and everyone can be can see it. So if you want to, mo to see it, to learn what it means, we have here in the welcome. Ayan, nandito yung mga ibig sabihin. For example, here is a student notebook. It is a private space shared between the teacher and each individual student. And here, the collaboration space. It is where everyone in the class can share, organize, and collaborate. I also have here the Kaldun Vike. So this is set up by my professors. And then everything I put here will be seen by her. And so kung dito sa collab space, lahat ng nasa class ay makikita yung ginagawa nyo dito. Dito naman is private lang. So kayong dalawa lang ng professor nyo yung makakakita. So if you want to create your own notebook naman, you just have to click here, add new notebook, and then type in a notebook name. So for example, mine, I have my own notebook, and I will click on it. <laughs> so, ayan. Wait lang. So makikita natin dito yung sections and pages. So yung sections is different topics that you have. So, for example, I want to take notes on this event. This is the OCE event. Then, okay. And then, nandito na siya section. And then, for example, of course, our event right now has two different topics, which is the, the essentials and then the digital organization, for example. So, Andito yung mga different notes mo. So, for example, din, gusto mo mag-take down notes pero tinatamad ka. As long as taibig yung environment mo and then yung professor nyo lang yung nagsasalita, you can actually choose here the dictate. And then everything your professor is saying will be taken down here. So, ayun, pag tinatamad kang mag-take down notes, you can just look, click on the dictate and then Ayan, it will automatically do your job for you. Also here in the notes, we can actually insert some files. So here in the ribbon insert, just click insert file and then file attachment. And choose files from your device. files dito guys, um, hindi siya mag-review as it is. So, you have to click on it and then magda-download siya sa device nyo and that's when you will see it. Ayan. You can also add here um, some pictures and more. So, you can just explore it na lang kapag may extra time kayo. Next is um, the APSIS or the RAMS. So here, this is a central hub for anything school-related, especially for details about your stay in APC, such as your registration, class schedule, flowchart, or even your grades. This is where important matters is to be processed, such as your enrollment and your clearance. Because we go here in our browser, and I will go to rams.apc.edu.ph. Dito tayo mag-redirect sa login. And then just sign in using your APC email account. And then, pagpupunta na tayo sa RAM. So pagka enter natin ng RAMs, ito agad yung bubungad sa atin, yung Paynamics. So that you will have idea on how to pay for your um, payment here. So here we have the finance transactions, registrar transactions, and the student records. So for the finance transactions, we have here the general payment. We can actually choose whether we want to 
pay for our enrollment or the others. So for the enrollment tuition, you can just click here the proceed to enrollment and then mag pop up na dun kung ano yung instructions on how you should pay your enrollment. And also here sa others, if you have any um, previous balance, just click here the continue. And then just choose your options and then just click on pay now. Next is here in the promissory note. So, for example, you cannot pay your some of your fees right away. You can just create a promissory note and add it here. Ayan. So that this school will know that you cannot um, pay it right away. Next is for the payment records. We can actually see here my previous transactions with the ATC. Ayan. So, andito yung mga proof of payments ko. For example, wala dito yung proof of payments ko. Hindi siya na-add. And then, nag-enroll na ako. Pero hindi, sa, sa assessment ko, hindi pa siya enrolled. You can actually email the APC. So, for example, balik tayo sa Outlook. And then, you want to email the finance, for example. But you don't know who is in the finance. You can just type here the finance. And then, nandito na yung finance office or for example, the registrar. You can just type in here. So, nandyan na. Later on, I will show you rin kung paano mo malalaman kung sino ba yung mga mahalagang tao sa APC. So, ayun. Wait lang. Ayan. Next is for the registrar transaction. So, we have here the master list of subject offerings. So, dito sa master list, we can actually see every courses or subjects that is available in this term in here. So, for example, I want to know the, the courses for my section. This is F191. And, nakikita ko dito, ito yung mga courses na currently enrolled ako. And then, I can just see my schedule here. So, ayan. Or for example, I want to know kung ilang comsec ba meron sa course right. Is sensitive nga pala siya guys. So, ayan. For example, gusto ko malaman ilang comsec ba yung meron ngayon. And then, ayan, makikita ko na siya dito. So, ayan lang. Next is for the registration. Right now, the registration is closed pero... If I'm not mistaken, usually nag open siya mga 3 weeks before the enrollment process. So I suggest that kapag nabuksan na yung registration, mag-register na kayo right away because if late kayong nag-register, may penalty siya. Ayun lang. Next is for the RAM enrollment. Here, I actually do not know here because only the senior high school grade 12 students have access to this enrollment lane. And for the enrollment, we can actually see the details. So, for the academic year 2021 and then term 1. Next is we can also see the student number, the student name, the course, and the scholarship. Ayan. We can also see here yung course flowchart mo. So, here sa flowchart, makikita natin dito lahat ng courses na kukunin mo for your full stay in the APC. So, naka-arrange na siya here. And also, maganda dito kasi medyo color-coded na siya. So, yung mga may violet, it means that it is a prerequisite. And then, pag may failed ka na class, it will actually mark as red. And then, in progress, is yellow. Green is pass. And then, yung parang blue is substituted from. Also, dito, makikita mo na rin yung grade mo for that course. So, for example, last term, I have my course XCOMP1. And then, nandito, 4.0. So, ayan. Makikita mo na yung grade. And then, your future courses. So, ayan. So, mag, um, you will, you are now aware of your different courses for your full stay in APC. Next is for the assessment. So, dito naman sa assessment, makikita mo yung payment breakdown ng ano, enrollment mo. So, here makikita mo kung magkano ba yung need mong bayaran and bakit ganyan yung need mong bayaran. And also, makikita mo if you are paying for installment, we can see here the deadline for your payment. So, ayan. 
So just take note of the dates in here. Next is here, the bottom corner. We can see my courses and then my schedules and then my professors. And we can see that I am officially enrolled in here. So for the student records, and sarado yung registration, class schedule is same as sa enrollment. And dito makikita natin yung schedules ko and then my flowchart and assessment. Next is yung grade. So maganda dito is makikita na natin yung grades natin and then GPA natin. So for example, I don't remember my grades on the school year 2019 and then first term. I just have to click on this and then makikita ko na yung grades ko and then my GPA. Also, if kunwari may problem, may problema or hindi nagtutugma yung grades na nandito sa alam mong grades mo, you can actually email your prof and then the registrar, ayan. Or pag hindi pa nagre-reflect yung grade mo, you can actually email registrar using Outlook. Next is yung clearance. So, itong clearance, nandito yung mga records mo. You have to see if you are cleared to enroll for the next term. Ayan. And the last thing is the APC official website, which is the apc.edu.ph. So, for example, here, um, we, have, we put here the apc.edu. And then, ito na yung magre-redirect sa atin, yung homepage ng APC website. So, makikita natin dito yung different informations about APC. For me, yung lagi kong tinitignan dito is yung calendar. So, here in the calendar, kapag klinik natin yung calendar icon, makikita natin yung calendar natin for the whole year. So, for example, here for the college. And then, at the bottom part is for the senior high school. So, maganda ito para magkaroon tayo ng idea when when's the holidays, the grade consultation, the exam week, kailan yung start ng class, and so on. Ayan. And if you want to have your own copy, just click here, and then it will just download for you. Ayan. Pag-clinic mo, nandito na, and then just click download. Next is yung sinabi ko sa inyo. Pag gusto nyo malaman kung sino yung kakausapin nyo or i-email nyo, just go to here, the about, and then the administrators. Pakikita mo actually dito yung mga mahalagang tao. For example, hindi ko kilala yung nasa finance, pero gusto kong ma-notify yung nasa finance because sobrang urgent na yung kailangan ko. Andito, makikita natin na yung executive director pala ng, ng finance is Sir Damito. So, ayan. Or sa registrar, for example, si Sir Stan, si Ms. Lia. And then sa senior high school, makikita rin natin na ah, si Ms. Monique pala yung strand hand ng STEM. And then si Sir Gino pala sa EBM. Ayun. So, at least dito magkaka-idea tayo kung sino ba yung mga admin sa APC. Ayan. Next is also yung facilities. Meron tayo dito facilities. And then, ang cool. Kasi makikita natin yung Mga, yung itsura ng APC because syempre right now hindi tayo makapunta sa APC because of the pandemic we can actually see that the APC actually have the recording studio may Microsoft Hub meron tayong animation room, may gym may dorm, ayan, so makikita natin dito yung itsura nyo sa pag-clinic natin ayan, di ba? so at least magkaroon tayo ng idea how the school actually looks like Next naman is dito sa registrar, meron tayong document request. So, ito yung mga type of documents na pwede nating hingin sa registrar. For example, kailangan natin, kailangan mong makuha yung TOR mo. You can just here click the online document request. And then, andito yung process, yung instructions on how you can request for your TOR, for example. And then, just follow this one and then email it or send it to the registrar and then wait for their replies. Ayan. Also, here we have the contact us. So, if you will have any questions to the to APC, we can actually just send it through here. Ayan. And then, makikita mo rin yung contact number nila and then yung email address. 
So, ayan. You can also explore the website on your own time kasi sobrang dami ka rin makikita dito. Like sa rampage, yung mga different announcement or mga activities. Ayan. Nandito rin. And then, ayun, that's all for the online classes essentials. The essentials session. Ayan. So, sana may natutunan kayo, guys. And then, that's it for my session. Ayan, thank you. Ayan. So, thank you for that insightful session about the essentials, Kyle. As you've heard from Kyle, there are a lot of Microsoft apps that you can use for your online classes and how you can be efficient with it, such as MS Teams na lagi-lagi natin ginagamit and hopefully mapadali buhay nyo, whether it may be sa synchronous or asynchronous session nyo. Siyempre, dami tinuro ng speaker natin. So let's chill for a few minutes before our next topic with the icebreaker. So for our icebreaker for today will be Rebus. So, how could you participate in the art speaker? So, here are the instructions. So, first, guess the hidden word or phrase given a set of pictures. Answer as fast as you can by typing your answer in the chat box and ending your answer with hashtag OCE. You will only be given one minute to guess the answer and a prize awaits for the lucky two winners from the two rounds of the icebreaker. So, there you have it. Madali lang, di ba? So, ready na ba kayo? Can I get some reacts from everyone in the audience if you are ready? Siyempre, may prize to, so dapat matuwa kayo eh. So, let's start for the first round. Pinakita na eh. Ayan. So, for our first round, may nakikita tayong donkey. Si donkey ba yan? Sa Shrek. Uh, may ink. Black ink. Bakit uh, black yung ink na pinapahita? Then, may taong tumatakbo. Uh, what's the word for... Uh, for takbo, di ba? Anong English nun? So, uh, la yung last picture, bakit may pinakita ang poster? So, sagot lang kayo. We have less than 30, 30 seconds na lang. So, answer lang kayo sa chat box natin. Paham, makapag, kuha kayo ng price, no? Icebreaker natin yan. So, again, type the answer in our chat panel and don't forget to add hashtag OCE after the answer para makonsider yung sagot nyo. So, ayan, we have only 10 seconds left. Ayan, so 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So, time's up. Ay, nag-timer na nga. Ayan, so time's up and the answer is asynchronous. So, congratulations to the winner. That will be announced later on during this event. Siyempre, lagyan natin ng onting thrill. With that, let's go to our second and last round for the icebreaker. So, uh, if di kayo nanalo sa first round, may chance pa kayo, syempre. So, let's start. So, we have one minute on the clock. Ayan. So, ayan, bakit may logo dyan? Dalawang logo. So, Marks and Spencer. Uh, Marks and Spencer, bakit nakalagay lang? M&S. Hmm. Di ba? Pakaisip kayo kung... Bakit, may, bakit clothes or baka dahil lang sa logo? Tapos may Tim Hortons, uh, but may naka-white, but may naka-red. Mapapaisip ka, ano yung word na yan? It, it's either a word or a phrase. So again, chat, chat down our your answer. And don't forget to add hashtag OCE after the answer para makonsider ang sagot nyo. So we have less than 20 seconds. So chat lang kayo guys. And we will pick our winner after our next topic. So again, we have only 10 seconds left. So 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So time's up. And the answer is MST. So congratulations sa mga nakakula. So uh, again, congratulations to our two winners of the icebreaker to be announced later on in this webinar. So mga hindi nanalo today, we don't worry. We'll be having a raffle after the announcement of Rebus winner. So stay lang kayo dyan. And let me remind for everyone that hasn't filled out our attendance form, the link is flashed on your screens and you might get a special token that will be revealed later on this event. Also, makakasama kayo sa raffle natin. So punta lang kayo sa attendance form para consider kayo for the raffle. Again, 
So let's go back to our event. Since we've been introduced with important apps and how to use them in our online classes, what about your files? Of course, in the long run, things will get messy and it's hard to enjoy your online classes if you spend hours finding a file. I remember that one subject na required i-compile to that zip, yung mga files namin dati, syempre maghalungkat ka for yung files mo dati, yung activities, projects, ganon, and it took me about an hour just to find everything. Sayang yung oras ko nun, hindi sana nakapag-follow ako or kaya nakapag-social media pa ako, no? So if you have the similar experience, our next topic will for sure help you. So I'd like to our to introduce our next speaker, the gorgeous Miss Abigail Chongson, the director for our documentation in APC MSC, and also a part of the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors Beta Status, who will be talking about the Digital Organization 101. Can we get an applause react from the audience? Yeah. Thank you so much, Seth, for that wonderful introduction. I'll, I'll just be sharing my screen. Uh, please confirm if my kita nyo. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, we can see yours PowerPoint right now. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Seth. Okay, hi guys. Uh, now that you're in, the, you're well versed with the digital or online class essentials that we need as a RAM, and Kyle has done a great job for uh, explaining to you each and every application that we mostly use, we commonly use as a student of Asia Pacific College. So before I really introduce introduce uh what is digital organization 101 let me just establish my impression onto you so that you know that i have credible enough to explain this topic so hi i am abigail chongson a fourth year college student of bachelor of science in accountancy uh a dense lister since first year an intern of kpmg philippines rng Manabat and Company right now, and a Beta Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador. As said by Seth earlier, I am also the current Director of Documentation of APC Microsoft Community. And finally, I am also a feature and literary writer of Rampage. So um, you would see me later. You would see me on the APC website mostly when I write about a fe some features um, of I wrote the one with um, the first gold student ambassador in the Philippines, oh, our one and only previous president of ABC MSC, Mr. Romel Armita. So you, you I, I wrote that. I'm proud of that. That's my first feature article for ABC. And I also write poems, so you may check that out. So um, if uh, later on you have more questions, you may email me at my student account or my student ambassador's account, abby.chongson at studentsambassadors.com. And you may also add me and my LinkedIn to establish your network, okay? So uh, now that you know that I have a lot of things to manage, I have a lot of th responsibilities, uh, orgs to um, comply to, you have to also understand that I have never failed to uh, do something that is assigned to me. Now, I, although I have a lot of uh, responsibilities, I, uh, I have a lot of activities, extracurricular or academics, I've been able to manage that well. So to just give you a quick uh, overview of what's happening to me right now so that you, you kind of know a little bit, bit about me. Right now, I, as an intern, I was uh, recognized, but this is not, nothing so official. This is just a training and I was just so, uh, I was I did not expect this. I was assigned I was recognized as the most active intern for the shaping the future of accounting through technology training. And um I just wanna I, I just want you to know that this is not me bragging about this one because I've I did not receive a certificate for this. I've already just received donuts. Tumaba ako dyan, siyempre. Pero, pero uh the reason why I'm showing this to you because the reason because the reason why I'm active is because I've already established my digital organization. I am I know how to do it properly and I well executed it well. So for this session, I'll be teaching you how to be digital, digitally organized. 
Okay, guys, ready? If you're ready, please send react so that I know you're there. Or, yeah, I think you, you have reacts na. Okay, you're ready. Okay, so here's our content outline. We have four parts for this session. First is I want to discuss to you about the significance of digital organization. Second, I want to teach you how to organize your hard drive or your storage in your own computer. And then thirdly, I want to help you organize your OneDrive. OneDrive is the cloud storage of Microsoft 365 applications. You'll know, learn, you'll know better after this session about OneDrive. Next, and finally, establishing the habit. I'm not going to teach you just this one-time thing. I want you to make a, get a commitment to establish that habit because digital organization is an essential skill now in the new normal okay so let's without further ado let's go start on the significance for the significance of digital organization 101 we have three we have three topics to cover okay as you can see on the slide um first we will be talking about just the basics of the organization skills and digital organization with that and how organization as the key to academic success and lastly the comparison of digital organization or file organization paper organization then old normal versus the new normal okay okay now that you know that i want to paint you up i want to you to imagine things and i want you to to paint i want to paint a picture in your mind Imagine if you're doing an assignment and for some reason you can't see this important file that uh, you need for to finish your assignment and it's it you need to you need to finish your assignment just 10 minutes 10 minutes na lang what you need to really submit it na so and for example you just you spend roughly 30 seconds looking for that assignment but Okay, you found it. You you have you have found it. You have successfully created that assignment. But what if that thirty seconds, you you you're you're unintentionally looking for a file, a folder, a paper, anything, pencil, ball pen, and you're doing that thirty seconds looking for that per hour. If you computed that. 30 seconds per day, you would have 12 minutes wasted time because of uh, because you didn't you can't just seem to find it. It's not just here in the table. No, it's it's all over the place. Your workspace is all over the place. And okay, 12 minutes it's okay. I mean, isang ml lang naman yun, isang laro lang naman yun. Eh. Wala pa nga yung, mas maliit pa nga yun sa isang laro sa ml eh. Lalo pat pag tumagal, di ba? Pero paano if you computed it per year. That 12 minutes, you computed per year. I've computed it, up and you can do the math on your own, but it would cost you three days per year in total if you have been wasting those kind of unnecessary things, those those uh, nuances that, that you can really manage if you have organized it properly. That being said, your productivity as a whole will decrease. So that's where organization comes in. And this is why organization is important. Our future, our goals, our general health will benefit when we organize our files, our papers in a very concise and very uh, systematic manner. It We want to really take Con take control of our own files in order for uh, it not to control us you know let's dive in deep digger dive in deeper of of what i'm telling you here so let's go back to the basics uh i want us to remind ourselves of the definition of organizations because we all been taught of this since we were like um uh, you know walk baby a toddler trying to or uh, just a just a just a child just playing with our toys and uh, our parents telling us that to fix your toys after you're done playing with it 
or um, when we were elementary, our teachers taught us to compile our papers so that um, we can we can pass the portfolio. Ah, uh, mga creative portfolio na, yun na may mga borders, borders pa, all those things. So organize as defined by. Uh, as defined my research, organization skills are those related to creating structure and order, boosting productivity, prioritizing tasks that must be completed immediately versus those that can be postponed, delegated to another person, or eliminated altogether. For this, for this uh, session, we will be focusing on creating structure and order to our digital files. So I am going to... Um, our uh, moderator is going to send a mentee, and I want you to answer that mentee for because I want you to answer what for you what are the benefits of staying organized. I want to I want to know uh, what is the benefits of staying organized for you. So. Thank you, Anamika, for sending. So just just click that. Uh, you may you may use a browser for just simply use a browser for that one. And then uh, I'm gonna wait for an for answers right now, and I'll see what are the most common benefits that you're seeing if you're staying organized. Wala pang sumasagot. Uh, ayan, meron na. Ayan, okay. Okay, so far we have easy to see files, peace of mind, time management, stress relief. Uh-huh, be productive, less worrying. Yes, keep it coming, guys. Yes, stress relief, peace of mind, easy to see files, less worrying, less clutter, less hassle. Wait, wait, I'm just going to make it more brighter so that everyone can see it. Wait. Uh-huh, wait. Okay. I'm going to share my screen again. Window here. I am. So I removed SpongeBob for just a little bit. Later on, you will see him again. It's just that uh, we, can, we can see... Uh, all those colors better when SpongeBob is not reimagining organization. Okay, so okay, so the biggest word that I am seeing in our word cloud is to be more productive and to have time management. To to it releases stress, which is all correct. You're doing great, guys. You, you see, you know, you know all those benefits of. Uh, benefits of staying organized. So we have to really enable that. We have to really um, not take for granted this organization skills because all I, I'm telling you guys, everyone or every businesses I know, especially in our in my company right now, uh, values organization. If you have this in your own and you not you need not to be thought of this. And you're already organized on your own academic performance then it will be a piece of cake to you guys for this session so thank you for those who answered our mentee so let's go back to my presentation mm -hmm. wait just going to going share my screen again window uh-huh so thank you again. All of those you answered are correct. Here are some of the benefits uh, according to research and study that is uh, commonly related to organiz organization skills. So it's stay focused. I've se seen that in the word cloud. Increased productivity. It is efficient use of time. It reduces stress levels. Yes, it, lead, uh, it leads to a balanced life because you're organized. It is, you have more flexibility on your own routine because you know how to, you have control, you know uh, when to rest, when to, you know, you have your own schedule. You, ha you, you have pos positive attitude. And finally, you have more space for creativity. So that way you can achieve the best uh, performance for your activities. See what I mean? That's just 
some of all among the rest of the benefits of the organization skills. Some of it, wala pa nga yung mga, yung mga, mga gandang nilagay nyo, di ba? So, yan. So, in other words, <clears throat> in other words, maintaining strong organization skills can reduce the chance of developing poor work habits. So, nag-research ako, ano ba yung mga typical uh, or common poor work habits that um, we unintentionally have established for ourselves? Because we, because we have uh, some minsan, may minsan nakakalimutan natin maging organized. Firstly, nakita ko to, procrastination. We're very guilty of this. If you're guilty of this, please press one sa chat. Gusto ko, nakita si ako rin, guilty ako dyan. And uh, I, guys, thank you, thank you kung may mga nag-respond sa chat for this one. And as you can see, uh, 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 procrastination is... Um, is the effect of when you are feeling overwhelmed with all those tasks, assignments, projects, assignments due today, as projects due tomorrow. When you are feeling overwhelmed and uh, you don't feel, you don't know if you can handle it. So you 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 have that kind of um, feeling, and the reason why you 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 feel like. You are you 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 will not be able to finish everything. It's because you haven't yet prioritized what needs to be done first, or ano bang yung mas madale. Just take things single task at a time. Finish one task at a time, and naturally everything, all those assignments, projects, seat works, things to review, lahat yan matatapos when we try to start at small thing. Kung mahirap sa yun simula, start small. Don't start it all together. It would be chaos, guys. Next, we have clutter. Ayan. So, sabi ko sa inyo, may kita niyo ulit si Spongebob eh. Madami yan si Spongebob dito. <laughs> Na-inspire ako sa si Spongebob while making this presentation. So, um, we clutter, what we mean by clutter is when our papers are piled up like mountains or like it's piled up all over the place that you can't seem to find all the things you need and uh it it oh sorry sorry it 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 really um have helps uh create chaos that um uh, decreases your focus or productivity on some things because when or it it even it even uh reduces your motivation to do things because everything is untidy everything is not on the correct order when you're when you're working on a space like this harvard university uh concluded that uh, a messy study space study space can undermine people's persistence can again undermine people's persistence in completing tasks so again, keeping a tidy, clutter-free study space will really improve our productivity and focus. So next, we have here miscommunication, seeing how SpongeBob and Patrick are not are fighting, <laughs> are fighting, and um, it miscommunication is for me, uh, in in simple terms, is the is the one causes caused by confusion. It, uh, the reason why um, being a disorganized person uh, will cause more miscommunication to, to his or her peers is because they seem to get, not, they don't get a hold of their own schedule. They tend to be late, they forgot what needs to be done, what is assigned to them, or like um, they, have, they have the tendency to be late for meetings. And that cre that's not a good work ethic. And I'm telling you, we need to we need to organize ourselves in order to have establish a good work ethic so that we can be a high performer as well. And finally, and the most important part is inefficiency. So, uh, uh, in what I mean by inefficiency here is that um when we have the time lost searching for misplaced items for information. Mi missing work deliverables or submitting incomplete or unprofessional work, not spending time on the most important task. This all all of this causes inefficiency and it, it reduces productivity and it 
it, and the time you you have you have yet to work on the activity that that you can you can improve for the best for your own good would be lessened and and that's 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 uh that's sad that's a, that's a sad thing to think about. We don't want that to happen ever to us again. If it were to happen, we we want it to happen because uh it's uncontrollable. Okay, so I've just seen this and uh research on this lang, and I have found a health benefit of being organized as well because again, mental health is very important as much as physical health. So we have stress relief sleep better, increase me time, and healthier lifestyle. So that only means that um, when you have, when you are organized, you are a person who ha who knows how to handle stress, you, you tend to sleep better because you don't think about what to do or, or, or you, you don't overthink that much because your, your, your academics are organized, your work are, are, are organized. You have your me time. You have more time to you have, you know you know when is the best time to play games or when is the best time to take a rest, and then you of course, if overall you improve your lifestyle, and of course be more productive. So moving on, moving on to the last topic of our of this part, I want uh someone to see the difference for this picture, like uh. I know what's difference. What's the difference of paper file organization then versus now? Ano na kita niyo sa dalawang picture na to? Uh, okay, okay, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna check the teams if there's someone who's uh, enthusiastically enough to chat. Like, ano bang na kita niyo pinagkaiba dati guys sa old normal ng Organizing paperworks, organizing files. Wala, wala. I okay. Tama, tama si Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, thank you, Alicia. Uh, meron pa? Meron pa ba? Okay. Napaka, ang dami, ang dami guys. So, sige, sige ako na lang if ayaw niya. Okay lang yan. No problem. Ako na bahala sa inyo. I got you. Ayan, okay, thank you, thank you, John Bernard Durano. Oh my god, thank you so much for your uh, participation. Okay, guys, as you can see here, may may kita kayo dyan, no? Dito may paper clips, may, may, may folders, may binders, and dito merong, merong, um, ang meron lang dito is yung computer mo, calculator, phone, yun lang, wala lang mga etche-etche, bodeche na, um, pag pa may wala nang uh, paper clips pa diyan or staplers or rulers no ang wala na yun kasi nandito na tayo sa digital world new normal na tayo so yung nasa picture lang is may papers doon may folders binders as, as i told earlier staplers paper clips file envelope notebooks and right now we have digital files folder shortcut folders pin to quick access L tell you more about that later. OneNote, Cloud Storage, Microsoft Teams, Outlook, all of those things that is all digitalized. And we need to manage also that kasi ito yung itsura niya kapag magulo. <laughs> and we've been guilty about this desktop kind of uh uh, kind of set up yung lahat ng files dun na lang lahat ng last na to last na to promise last na to projects nandiyan lahat sa desktop and yan yung itsura yan yung itsura at pinagkaiba nila then versus now and um and as i analyze this um it, it is more difficult to uh, organize the digital files right now because digital files are can is intangible. Hindi siya nakahawakan, kumbaga. Hindi siya yung tulad ng may kita mong makalat sa paper kapag uh, then, ngayon, um, lagay mo lang sa lahat ng document folders or lagay mo lang sa desktop. Okay na yun, pwede na yun, hindi mo naman nakahawakan eh. This is why I'm going to teach you how to organize your digital files. Okay? So, let's move on na tayo sa next part ng session. Organizing your hard drive. Okay? 
moving on here. In organizing your hard drive, I want you to remember three things. Firstly, to treat your computer as a digital file cabinet. Kung dati meron tayong digital file cabinet na nandun lahat ng pieces na uh, seat work assignments natin sa isang um, and bawat subject yun, sana yung computer then we have that kind of system. We have that kind of uh, classifications. Next, we ha next I want you to remember to set up a system of folders and subfolders. Yun yung dun po pasok yung sinasabi kong sana may classification din. And then thirdly, to order your files for your convenience. Kasi in digital organization, there are no specific rules. You're going to establish your own because you know yourself best. It, hindi ako din dito para sabihin sa inyo, ay, ganito gawin nyo, step number one, step number, hindi. I'll going, I'm just going to show you a guide, not necessarily how, how to do it step by step. I'm just going to help you uh, start it, kumbaga. Okay, so here, firstly, in treating your computer as a digital file cabinet. So, uh, unang-unang gagawin mo is dapat meron kang folder, may root folder ka. So, para siyang yung mga folders na ginagamit natin dati, yung mga binders natin noon. And then, sa loob ng folders, dapat may subcategories or subfolders, which is yung mga fillers natin, mga katleyas or whatnots or um, yung mga, mga, mga brown envelope, mga ganun. Tapos, uh, you want it to, call, to, to be easily recognized. So, you can customize it or color code it. So, in, in this case, in our digital code, uh, we can only color code in our, our cloud, sa ibang cloud. But sa customization of our hard drive, we're more focused on customizing it in another way. I'll tell you more later. Next, uh, to set up a system of folders and subs, how to do that is to firstly create uh, folders in a logical hierarchy. So, what do you mean by logical hierarchy? What I mean by this one is that um, you, you will create a folder in a way that it is orderly with, uh, for example, in pictures you have a year. You, you you use year to name those folders for for documents for your academic documents you can use your subjects as categories or folders you can use your all subjects like for the or, and as your root root uh root folder you can you can use education for example education then first term then like game with an oral communications um, may example ako mamaya. So next we have the to, we have to nest folders within folders. Nesting means sa loob ng folder may isa pang may mga folders. Ma, magandang practice na laging may fo, wa, hindi hindi pa kalat-kalat lang yung mga files niyo sa isang malaking root folder. And then next to follow the file naming convention. What do we mean by file naming conventions, Avi? Yung file naming conventions, oh, this is like your own set of rules on how to name your files. That we, that is what we mean by file naming convention. So for example, uh, I want when I'm I'm naming my files, I want my files to first have the subject that is related to it, like odd print underscore. That's, and then I will write ha, pang ilang assignment na yun. Assign, assignment number one underscore and then my surname so that i know that it's mine and i know pang i know uh kung pang ilan na siya sa assignment ko so that when my teacher ask for an evidence that this is my my this is uh that i submitted my file uh, on the day i i can i can show that evidence and i can also show a screenshot of msc this ms teams that i have submitted it and finally, to file or save as you go. When you're creating a document, you must, you must, it is very important to save as, not just anywhere in your documents or in desktop, to save as to the folder that it is best, um, uh, best um, 
that is best under it. Like, it is best categorized. So, kung nasa education siya, or kung nandun siya sa personal files mo, dapat doon sa folder na yun. Hindi, hindi yung pakalat-kalat lang siya sa desktop. Okay? So, next, this is our example, yung sinabi ko sa inyo. So, for me, um, I have I have a root folder, and this is our default root folder called documents. In my documents, I have my I have five folders: college, senior high school, media, all of my uh, creative um, projects, uh, personal, and of course to my business. We have a business with my with my sister, so. I have that kind of folder. And then next, in my when I open my college folder, you will see these folders as well. I have admissions, clubs, freshmen, junior, sophomore, senior, scholarship. Lahat yan, folder pa lang yan. Hindi nyo pa nakikita yung file. And that's, very, that's a good way to start. Next, when I open a junior folder, you will see there that uh, since we're in a, a tri-semestral academic, uh, uh, yeah, tri-semestral, tri uh, I will see three folders, first term, second term, third term, and and moving moving forward, and then fast forward, kasi pag in-open nyo yan, marami pa akong, pag fast forward sa first, for, first term, pag binuksan nyo yung first term, may may kita yung mga subjects, I don't think that you need to know all my subjects in first term, because first term is, whoo, daming subjects on, so I just uh, click on in my first term, there's a subject called Audpin or auditing principles. So, I in my in that in that folder, you would see drafts, assignments, exams, and learning materials. For uh for my own rules, for my own rules in establishing this folder. Again, guys, there are no rules. You need to remember you need to remember this because. Uh, this is one I created on my own because this is one the one that I, I have I, in my circumstance in my life. So in for example in my drafts, when I'm creating my assignments that I haven't yet submitted to my professors, I like it to create the folder that is like a work in process, so that um I this one can be easier to delete when I when I don't need it anymore. And those who have already been checked and and uh, reviewed by my professors, kung baga nabalik niya na, assignment returned na, dito ko sinalagay para ma-review ko yung, kasi yung mga prof ko, may mga red markings dun sa mali ko. So, yun yung gusto kong, gusto kong i-review after. Then, sa exam, syempre, mga exams ko, gusto kong reviewin din yan. Sa learning materials, dito ko papasok yung mga modules and mga, uh, mga course packs na binibigay ng prof. And then there, uh, when you open uh, you when you open the assignments folder, you will see there Audprin M2 Chongson. That's all for uh, an example. It, this is uh, my current. Uh, nag improve yung ano kay yung ano ba yun? nag ano ng accent. Uh, nag improve yung folders ko. So you can see here that um, mas dumami na yung folders, but at least. Um, on the documents folder, you will see the user. Mine is AGT. Para lang shortcut lang. Abigail Chongson lang. And then, yeah, you will see that. That's an example of how you structure your own uh, files and have that kind of systematic digital file cabinet. So now, you need to order your files for your own convenience so that it is easier to find. I have here a lot of... Um, just five things, just if I'm not mistaken, five tips that you can use to order your files for your own convenience. First is to display your files in a list to see the details. There's an icon at uh, the lower corner. Don't, don't worry, later on I'll, I'll demo this. And secondly, we have uh, to set priorities if you want to, to see a file that or you, you want to see a file that uh, you most used at the top so that it so that you can easily click on it whenever possible. You can use that. And then I have here uh, the uh, using shortcut folder. Not sure if you're you're aware of this, but you can read. That is the best tip I am going to share to you. Then you can also use pin to quick access. 
And then finally, five, the customers customize your fo folder icon. And uh, the folder icon um, we have here is uh, the to or to customize the folder icon. You have you need to have an image that is uh, that has a file type of .ico or ico. And uh, you can see here a, a site. You can you will see here um, sites that I've shown the screen that you can use to look for those images. So moving on, here is the demo. So I'm gonna go, I'm going to demo all those tips that I've shared to you and see it for as it as you in your screen. Wait lang ah, share ko lang ulit yung screen ko. Ayan, okay. And sharing my screen. Let me know if you you can see it. Hi, we can see it now. Thanks, Seth. Thank you, Seth. Wait lang. You can see my desktop. Ayun. Wait lang. I'm just going to fix it. Oh, here. Ayan, okay. So first things first, we have to, uh, I want to show you how to list details, yung pinakita ko kanina. So punta tayo sa documents, punta tayo kay AGT. Ayan, si AGT, si Abigail Chongson. The other files is for my other, kasi hindi lang ako yung unang gumagamit, ako lang yung gumagamit nito yung pang pamilya tong laptop ko. So, ayan, what I'm talking about when you, when um, listing your folders like this is the, to click the little, li list the details icon here at the bottom of, bottom right corner of your screen, here. Kasi kapag ganito, pwede naman kung ganyan din yung folder. Pwede, pwede naman. But I, I'm suggesting this list files when, for example, you have a lot of, uh, yan, maunti pa, di ba? Ito yung pinuntahan natin. When, for example, you have a lot of files like that, so parang ganyan ganyan. For me, this is just my own opinion. You can use the icon if you want to. But for me, this is more uh, pleasing to the eye. I know I know what to look at. I know what is to be done and all of those things. And for my, for my, uh, for my, for example, currently, in my intern internship files right now, I'm do what I'm doing is that uh, since uh, masyadong madami kada kunwari, kapag pumunta ako dito, meron siyang Excel pang pinapagawa. I'm what I'm doing is to really to really uh, organize it well to to use folders at the best of my abilities. So. Paano yan? Paano yan kung ganyan pala? Ang dami kong kiniklik bago lang ako makarating dito sa, sa file na to, for example. So, what you can do is to, uh, what I told you earlier, is to pin, uh, pwede yung use shortcut. Paano yung use shortcut? So, for example, I, I am using this one, mostly this one. Okay, I'm just going to delete it. This is what I called as shortcut folder. Can you see this? So in, instead of yun yun lagi kong, instead of uh, going through all of those uh, pathways, those bottlenecks, I I can just use shortcuts. So how how did I do that? How did I put it on my desktop and not and still be organized? I'm just going to delete this. This will not again. This will not delete your your file. This is just a shortcut. So and dito pa rin siya kahit ganun. So. You'll just go to uh, uh, the specific folder that you both use for the meantime for this term, for example, first term to, and just uh, use it like send to, right click then send to desktop, create shortcut, then you will see here the, you will see here the folder. Easy as that, di ba? Yan lang. So, uh, yun yung isa, pwede rin ganito. Pwede ring pin to quick access. So, tanggalin ko lang muna ah. Yung pin to quick access naman, may kita niyo yung folder na yun once you open the file explorer. 
So for example, here, just uh, pin to quick access. Then may kita nyo na agad. So, ito, hindi ko pa na... Basta may gigets nyo yung nakapin kapag naita nyo yung pin. Di ba? Parang yung pin mismo na ginagamit natin nung, ano, sa mga bulletin boards, nagamit din natin yan digitally. So, gamit na gamit ko yan. Lalo pat, uh, lalo pat ang daming files namin ngayon sa internship. And um, we can also set priority. Paano mag-set ng priority? For this one, ito kasi, once na pag marami na, for example, this one, it is our internship journey plan. And this is where we put our reflections, our reports, our notes, our key learnings. I can, para hindi siya matabunan ng marami folders na ginawa ko, uh, what I can do is just uh, click, uh, for example, one, or, yan, and it, or I this one for this one you can use pala is what I did kasi is um yeah you can use that but you would not see it you would not see it there because uh, my or my order of files is by by file type so let's see if I sort it by name oh I used zero okay dun tayo dun sa hindi ko inorganize ng ano Nang ganyan. Doon tayo sa... My, my file naming conventions kasi is by date doon since I want to know what the date of the training is. So, punta tayo for example sa third term training. Mm, pili ako ng subject. Siguro Odd Pro 3. Ayan. For example, si Odd Pro 3. Ang dami, ang dami, ang dami. So, ang ginawa ko dito sa audit of audit of uh audit audit of banks is uh in organize ko yung para ma, para unari yan ang gulo-gulo diba tapos hindi pa siya hindi pa siya pareho ng file naming conventions that's because ito yung ginamit namin na galing sa internet so what you can do is for example ang ang assignment for the week is mostly focused on BDO is um to just click you just press uh, the first number one and automatically pupunta siya sa taas pwede ring ano uh, by by uh, alphabetical logically by default si uh, file explorer ilalagay siya sa taas and um, kapag ginamit mo yung alphabetical mas mauna pa rin ang numerical so kaya na una si numerical here you can see the difference ba? kapag winon ko at yung ganun Okay. That's just, uh, just like that. that this is just how. Um, that's just a tip on how you can prioritize your files. And then, um, what last thing? I think that's the last. The last thing that I want to show you, and this is the cutest. I've always been using this, this since then, but uh, because I've uh resetted or I've uh rebooted my computer, I've lost all my icons. So I'm just going to start it again. Is to, for example. Uh, going to, to AGT, my root folder, right click properties, then click customize, then click change icon. Okay, so in changing icon, you must f find first where is the, where is, uh, where did you download the icon files? So what we can do, wala pa eh, wala pa akong din na download eh, paano ba yan? What we can do, sabi dito, file type must be .ico, .icl, .sde, and church, church, church. You can use just use .ico. So what we can do is to go to the website, website, or desktop icons, or iconarchive.com. And since my spirit animal is a panda, I'll search for a panda. And naturally, I would find a, a, a icon that I want. I want this one. So cute. So, I'll download this one. Download as Ico. Click Ico. And then, you would see it here. Uh-huh. You would see it there. And then, browse for it. And then, here, you would see it. Just in the downloads. Open it. OK. Click OK. And then, apply. And then, you would see my panda. <laughs> And that's personalized. I mean, I mean, for all those folders, I mean, I know that this is mine. It's not just a typical folder. And you would, you can also use that in, ed for example, ed 
uh, customize every root folder that you want. For example, education. I want uh, I want for education. I want a book. Anong book? Gusto kong magandang itsura. Yan, pwede na yan. Pili lang ako dyan. Ico. Again, guys, Ico. Ah. File type Ico. And then, just uh, education, cust properties, customize, change icon, browse for it. And then, here, OK, apply. And then, yeah, kita ko na agad na education. See? See what I mean about customizing your files and and what and making organization fun that's just uh that's just how you can organize your hard drive that's it you you can do you have you must have a file naming convention you must test your folders properly and uh oh before i forget for example you want to you want to save you want to save a file for example um hmm what do we i uh, let's just create an, a new file for example, we're going to create an essay. Uh, this one. This one is for... Uh, this one, this one, this one. Let's create this one. Oh, pinalitan ko pala yung place tone. Kapag ganong error, guys, huwag kayong magbahala. Pinalitan ko lang yung, yung place na yun. So, punari, punta na lang tayo sa isang uh, file ko. Sa RAM page, for example. For example, this one. And with an E. Oh my God, you would see this by September. So hopefully you would uh, uh, look forward to Rampage feature articles then. And as well as other articles, news articles, uh, mga not silang department. Sorry, masyado ang bias sa, sa, ano, <laughs> sa feature. So anyway, uh, ayan. For example, si Anne with the E, nasa, nasa, nasa desktop folder ko pa siya. Wala pa siya sa pina folder ng na gusto ko. So what I can do is click file, click save us, then browse. Then, then you would just um you would just go to the files that you're look that uh, you want. For example, for me, I'm going to documents, go to Abby and uh, go to clubs or school orge because uh, and then go to rampage i'm going to save it here and of course i don't like it to have this one i'm just going to to uh have it a proper naming convention so like rampage um and with an e then click save that's a it's all on you, like your own rules for that one, own rules. And you can also save as when um, there's two things to save. There's a two way to save as. So you can save as by, for example, um, um, what can we write? For example, um, we're going to write a uh, reflection, a reflection for a movie. Hmm. Spider-Man. Tama ba yung, yung ano ko ngayon? Or I phone ba siya? Hindi ko na alam kung ano Spider-Man ngayon. Pero yung recent, anyway, yung Spider-Man comes home na lang. Comes home. Hindi ko alam, hindi ko maalala. <laughs> alam ko kakapanood ko lang yung kahapon, pero nakalimutan ko na siya. So, movie review, for example. And I'm just gonna fold. Yes, and then this. Uh, Hornari yan na. Just click Control S, save us. And you would see here automatically uh, uh, save as file. So, meron dito yung, yung, yung mga default. What you can do is, if gamit na gamit mo, for example, ako sa Rampage, what I can do is to, is to pin it, like pin it to the list. The reason why dalawa kasi may, whip, may working process sa desktop and may documents. Dun ako dun sa, sa gamit na gamit. Dun sa gusto ko, which is a documents file. Hindi dun sa work in process pa lang. Kapag hindi ko yan, hindi ko na kailangan pumunta pa dun sa old version na kailangan ko pang ganyanin. Hindi, pwede ko na agad siyang automatically jaan and then save. Then may kita na siya doon sa, doon sa, uh, dito, sa, sa, hindi kay documents, kay documents tayo, kay AGT, uh, dito sa rampage. Spider-Man. See? Ganun lang, guys. Yun lang, yun lang yung, that's the end of the demo for that second part of our session. So, going back to 
my presentation, going back to my presentation. Let me know if you have any questions on the chat. Just chat it bago nyo pa makalimutan so that I can answer it later at the end of my uh, presentation. Okay, sharing my screen now. Okay, I think you can see it because I can see the red uh, red um, border. Okay, now we, we're going to move on the cloud, organizing your OneDrive. So OneDrive naman, guys, um, we have to remember that the, the cloud storage that we're using is our OneDrive. So for Digital Organization 101, you have to remember what is Microsoft OneDrive. So I think this is the feeling ko hindi nyo nagagamit, so I want it to be to emphasize today. So Microsoft OneDrive is a cloud story that you can get to from anywhere. It helps you stay organized, access your important documents, photos, and other files from any device and share those files with friends, family, or co-workers. So bakit why drive why one drive i mean bukod sa it prevents damage and lost file bukod sa it can archive your files why one drive it's because when you compare it to google drive to dropbox for apple you would see that um google drive has only 15 gigabytes free and dropbox has 2 gigabytes free Pero abi yung OneDrive naman 5 gig, gig, gigabytes lang ah. No. For every RAM, we have 1 terabyte. That means 1000 gigabyte. Imagine 1000 gigabyte para lang sa academic files. So you we must maximize that 1 terabyte. Hindi yung lahat ng school files natin. Lahat ng school files natin nakatambak lang sa hard drive natin. We can utilize our cloud storage as well. We can Put our other files, for example, lahat ng first year files nyo, kung third year na kayo, lagay nyo na dun sa school, sa school cloud nyo, sa cloud nyo din to sa OneDrive. So, yan ang mga perks ng pagiging RAM, so dapat i-maximize natin yan. So, may evidence ako dyan. You would see here, uh, na total 1,000 gigabytes for every RAM. Yan. So, uh, talking about OneDrive supremacy, OneDrive has also can be accessed on your PC or Mac, and um, it it lets you sync in all your files via cloud and keep your files up to date. You can also use it on the, on the web OneDrive.com and access your files anywhere with internet access. Next week, lastly, we have it on your phone or tablet. And this is very convenient when you're on the go. You can you, OneDrive mobile apps is applicable also for Android, iOS, or Windows phone. Diba? So, all of three, if meron kanyang tatlong, uh, tatlong kumbaga, devices, all of this, all of your files are well synced kapag naka sign in kayo sa three devices nyo as well. Diba? So, Mabilisang, so, mabilisang lesson lang for that. Let's move on agad sa demo natin. So, sa demo natin, I'll go on again to share my screen. I'll teach you how to, how to, oh wait. Here. How to sync your files uh, using OneDrive. So, uh, tinuro ni Kyle kung paano kayo pumunta dito sa portal. Just of course, um, kung nasan man kayo, you will always have this easy menu to uh, explore Microsoft 365 application. So just click OneDrive and you really go to this website. So nandito na sa website na to, and I have all these folders. So if you can, as you can see, ang daming folders na andito. Ang dami. But what you can do, is to uh what you can do is to sync it to your own fo on your own folder para hindi niyo na kailangan siya i-access on the web so ano ba yung sinasabi ko so ang sinasabi ko is yung OneDrive nyo dito kumbaga kung kumbaga kung may kita ko yung kung may kita ko yung APC speaks dito may kita ko yung 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 mga org files namin dito May kita ko din siya sa cloud. Kung ano yun nandito sa cloud, andun din sa computer ko. And, 
ang mag- ang maganda pa dito, hindi wala hindi to kumakain ng space ko sa storage ko sa computer. 'Di ba may storage ako na ayan, I have I've just ito pa lang yung gamit ko sa computer ko. I have 742 gig pa. That's because this for this uh for all of these files, all of these files combined is not taking space on my own computer. So paano ba gawin 'yun? Paano ba gawin 'yun, Abby? So paano ba natin ma-establish yung folder ng OneDrive and magsi-sync din siya sa dun sa sa school account ko in my own school account. So what you can do is to sign in first. You you'll sign in first here. Uh what you what you, what you want to do? Ako, ako si naka-sign in na eh. Pinapakita ko ngayon kung paano magsi-sign in kapag hindi ka pa naka-sign in. So hindi mo yun na kailangan gawin to. Yung gagawin ko. So what I want to do is go to properties. Just just gonna I'm just gonna look for for settings for the settings of this app here and i'm just going to add an account because i have already added uh, my student account i'm just it's loading let me just unshare it my screen so that i can easily close the applications that i've set as an example and just show you all of uh, all of uh, what is important kumbaga Ito lang. Ito na. Here. Yan. Going to exit all those files and just focus on OneDrive. Here. I'm just, you don't need to do this again. You don't need to do this. I'm just going to do this because um, I already established this and it is very heavy. It has a lot of want a lot of files sync so if i if i'm going to disable that account it would take some time so i have i have not yet uh established my onedrive for my student ambassador's account so i i'll just sign in what you can do is just sign in for so for for our student account you'll just use your own your at student.apc.edu.ph then that apc that edu that ph and for me i'll just try to show you what it would look like when you sign in so i'll be the chongson at student ambassadors click sign in signing in just wait it will it would just load and then <laughs> it, your file is established already so what a OneDrive folder already sits on this computer for this uh one drive so i'm just going to to choose new folder or this one and then uh select folder and then use for use this folder okay so i have and um Microsoft OneDrive have also uh, the option to to back up your the files that you have already have if you want to. Kung gusto nyo automatically lahat ng files na meron kayo, ilagay nyo na din sa cloud. For me, I don't want to do that because that would take some time and this is only for a demo. So, I'm going to skip that. So, get to know OneDrive next and share files your folders and all your files ready on demand on the you can be access online only on this device and always available so you can also use the onedrive mobile app later and your onedrive is ready for you let's open my onedrive folder here you would see my onedrive student ambassadors account and you would see all of these icons so is automatically synced even though I have I have yet to sign in to hindi mo na kailangan mag-establish a web portal kasi naka-sign in na ako sa Microsoft ko dito sa Edge sa Microsoft Edge so I don't need to sign in on but if meron mga if meron mga tanong pa if in case meron kayong makita pang sign in just sign in and then sa web portal para mag-sync in lang siya so you Automatically, you just click sync and just click open. Yes, and then 
you'll wait for all of your folders in your own OneDrive to sync on your own computer or hard drive. And again, it would not take space on your own folder. That's the perks of having a cloud storage. Besides from a backup, it would you would not lose all your academic files. It's very important for us students. It will also take uh, it will also lighten uh, the productivity or the RAM for your computer. That way you can play games better, you can uh, utilize or you can edit videos better. Um, word processing is easier because your computer is not lagging. So, nakita niyo yung mga icons seto, di ba? I'm going to explain to you what these icons means. Meron kayo nakita ng cloud, maybe log. Meron pa ang tao. Yung tao, that that <laughs> that tao talaga. Yung that that person symbolizes that this folder is a shared folder. That means I have shared this file to another person. And for example, nagsisync pa yung file mo. Ito kasi OneDrive helps you to keep your files up to date. So for example, ang recently added files ko lang is Anna Green Gables movie. Um, me and my co-writer for uh, Rampage is have been working for this. So we've been watching uh, all of the versions of Anne with an E. So that's why I have this, that kind of folder. So that way, um, all of those files are up to date even though I'm, it's automatically syncing. So thanks OneDrive for that. Okay, going back to my presentation here, going back to here, my presentation. I want you to see uh, the difference between this, uh, this icon. So OneDrive sync icons explain. A blue icon means that it is only available on cloud or it is only available online. So once you don't have an internet, you would not access it even on your files explorer folder. So the green green tick icons or green check mark means that when you open an online file, you will you will you can access it on your on your device and it, it can be available anytime even without internet access. So you can open once you open it, it can be accessed offline. But if you want your files to always be accessible, what you want to do is to have the the icon of status of solid green circle with the white check mark. What we what do we mean by this one? It means that you want to 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 always keep this device or al always keep on this device. Always keep a file on this. Device. That means that file will that file will take a space on your computer. So ibig sabihin hindi na siya yung sinasabi ko kanina na Na, na hindi siya magte-take ng space sa hard drive mo. Ang gagawin ang mangyayari diyan, for example, going back here, um if if may nakita kayong ganyan, pag kunwari may binuksan ako dito ng file, for example, binuksan ko yung yung kaya siya ganito kasi ito yung mga MS Teams na default files na hina-dump lang nila. Yung iba dito inorganize ko kasi ang dami niya pa. So I need to work on that for digital organization so so far this is these are more senior high school files that uh when i haven't yet learned how to digital to be digitally organ so when i open this or when i open orman this is so cute when i open orman once i exit it orman 166 it will be uh, oh even because i opened it, it will be uh, of it will be available even at offline if i want it to be accessible even always accessible i want what i want to do is to right click and click always keep on this device and then it would change to a green icon you see what i mean that's how uh status works and it it's just good to know how the status works so that you know where 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 or where is really your file available diba? so yeah Yun na yung, yun na yung demo natin for OneDrive. I'm, move, I'm moving on to the last session. If you have you guys have uh, any question, please feel free to chat it in the chat box. So for our last last section for this session is the establishing the habit. We want you to have the, that habit of organizing your digital files. What I mean is to so I'm going to 
what I mean is to call your files regularly, back up your files regularly, and to have a good file management so that in, at the end of the day, it would improve your academic productivity. So I'm going to share it to you uh, just, just this quick secret to digital file organization. Sabe, if you want to keep your files organized for the long haul, what you need is a digital file organizational system, which I, which I told you earlier. Systems prolong your organization and keep you from having to completely reorganize every file all over again. And a simple can be as simple as always naming a file right away. Just save as you go, guys. Save file as you go. And making sure to move your files into a folder. The key is to be strategic and to plan out your system ahead of time. And again, don't be afraid to customize. <laughs> don't be afraid to customize, guys. It's your own files. There's nothing wrong with how you, you name your files. Or just, have, just have a set of rules so that it, uh, it is easier to search for it, to filter it whenever you need it, whenever your teacher needs it, or whenever your colleague needs it, your, your co-student leader needs it. And whenever you're call or decluttering your files, you need to set a rule for yourself. Like when can I de when I declutter means the when can I delete my files or recycle my files in my recycling build? What you can do is just uh for example set a set a time weekly for a daily. Week. For me, I want it weekly para kung kailangan ko pan uh on the next day i can i can delete it but i want but that's your own choice and then again to utilize your cloud back up your files regularly automatically syncing your own files and get and again saving as or saving as you go can use your 30 seconds wisely no need to look for your files and use your 30 and instead, that 30 seconds, you should use that 30 seconds to, se to save us properly instead of looking for it. Get what I mean? Because at the end of the day, the end goal of digital organization is to ensure that you can find what you're looking for, even if you lo you're looking for it after years of it, after its creation. Nakita niyo pala yung presenter view. Thank you. Thank you, moderators. So, I think, yan, okay na? I think okay na. Okay. Okay, so, uh, ensure that you're, you can find what you're looking for even if you're looking for it after its creation. So, once you're, you have set that goal, you're, you can say to yourself that it's mission complete. You've done your best. You've do, you're digitally organized and prepared for the corporate world. So if you have any questions, you, it is, uh, can we open the forum now, Seth? Uh, sure. Uh, yes. If there are any questions you have, please chat. Or um, if you're not uh, up to having a live question, you can also email us or chat us in our social media pages. So uh, just chat if you have any questions. We'll answer it right now. Mm -hmm. And if wala naman, let's continue. Later on, so okay, so thank you. If if uh, nahiya pa kayo, chat email nyo lang ako sa student account ko. I reply ako sa email aichongsatstudent.abc.edu.ph or my student ambassadors account at abi.chongsatstudentambassadors.com or you can add me at LinkedIn so that you can expand your network. Thank you guys. That's all for Digital Organization 101. Ayan, so. Thank you for that helpful advice, Abby. For sure, we'll be able to apply those tips in our online classes this academic year, especially for requirements. You know, everything is digitalized this school year and last year. It is important to keep track of where your files are, especially important documents you may need in the future. And with that, we're almost at the, at the end of our webinar. Well, first, we'd appreciate if you answer our evaluation form for this webinar. Just go to the link that you see on your screen or go to the chat box and our moderators will post the link uh, directly there. Again, we'd really hope that you can answer this evaluation form so that we can provide better events to this academic year. 
And before we continue on, we'd like to share a small teaser of what's to come and the exciting to the exciting new events in APC MSC. For that, we are going to show you a short teaser that was also shown in our FB page right now. Ayan, so this was a short teaser that we actually have planned for the rest of the school year. So this feature for the future, we will sh showcase in the org fair this academic year. If you're curious what those images are, follow us in our social medias to get a head start in the update. But for now, after this event, you will gain a badge noting your participation in our webinar, the OCE badge. You will receive your badges in your email, provided that you answer our attendance form, flash on your screen, and in the chat panel and also our evaluation form. And now the part where you guys have been waiting for. The announcement of winners and here are the lucky winners for our icebreakers. So congratulations to Alicia May Ferraro and Jamzi Mary Kuyuga. So congratulations for you too. And congrats uh, we, uh, to claim your prize, please answer the form for the winners which will be displayed on the screen and also on the chat by our moderators. So, ayan. So, congrats again sa mga nanalo. And may next time pa naman yung mga hindi nanalo. And actually, ito na nga yung next time. So, we're also prepared a uh, raffle for those who didn't win at the icebreaker. For this one, we entered the names from the attendance list. Pwede pa rin naman kayo maglagay ng, uh, mag-fill out ng attendance form for the badge. So, uh, for this raffle, para sa mga hindi na nalo sa icebreaker, uh, for this one, we also encourage you to reply to our chat panel para ma-include kayo for uh, para maging validated yung panalo nyo. Just, ans just, uh, just reply anything, kahit hashtag OCE, okay na sa amin yun, just to give a heads up if you are here, right here, and right now. If our moderators did this here, reply, sad to say, Let's move on to the next person. Sayang naman eh. So, let's go. Uh, let's go for our first winner for this raffle. So, moderators. Yan. So, thank you sa moderator natin kasi naglagay pa siya ng mga names nyo. Ang dami niya eh. Ayan. So, for our first winner is actually Felix Miguel Emberga. So, I'll give you 10 seconds para mag-chat sa... Uh, ating chat panel para ma-notify na nandito ha. So, Felix, nandito ka ba? Ayan, present daw. So, congratulations to Felix. So, may prize ka which you will get after this webinar. We will contact you as soon as prepared na yung prize mo. So, ayan, again, thank you, Felix. Congratulations. So, let's go on to our second winner for this raffle. Sino kayo yung mananalo? Siyempre, uh, secret yung price namin, pero voucher siya. Siyempre. So, ayan na, tumitigil na yung wheel. So, our second winner is Sabrina Rafaela Lopez. Again, Sabrina, Sabrina, nandito ka ba? Present. Ayan. So, congratulations, Sabrina. So, we will contact you uh, as soon as you get your prize. Ayan. So, nakaka-excite, no? So, we have three winners pala dito. So, for our last winner for this raffle, ayan, pinaikot na na yung mahiwagang ruleta. So, sino kaya yung last na winner natin? And, napunta kay Kelly Dumbrique. Hello, Kelly Dumbrique. Nandito ka ba? Hi, Kelly. Please reply pa malaman namin. Ayan, nag-reply na siya. So, congratulations, Ket. Uh, let's congratulate again the three winners, Felix, Sabrina, and Kelly for winning uh, in our raffle. Of course, uh, di lang naman to yung naging isang event namin eh. So, be prepared in our next uh, next events. Meron kami pa ganito, may mga competition. So, stay tuned and always be updated in our social media. So, I ask the technical to share their screen again. So, masaya to. So, um, we also encourage everyone that uh, that won the raffle and also the icebreakers to 
answer our evaluation form. So that's it for our three winners for the raffle. Again, similar to the icebreaker, we'd appreciate if you answer the evaluation form first. Then answer the winner form para maklim yung prizes nyo. Please do note that we'll also be contacting you when the prizes are sent out through email. Our last reminder for this webinar, we'd appreciate if you answer our evaluation form, flash on your screens and in our meeting chat panel, and also our attendance form for your badges to be sent to your email. And the long-awaited conclusion is here. Siyempre, hindi mawawala sa mga event is yung photo op. So I'll just share my screen. So I uh, will encourage everyone to sh open your screen. I'll ask the technical to enable your cameras. Mm, hello, technical. Uh, let's share our screen. So for everyone, please open your cameras. Also, uh, I'll ask our technical to enable your cameras para makasabay kayo dito. Ayan, so mag-to-go remote tayo since masaya to and uh, maganda yung scenery niyan. So, very interactive siya. Ayan, nakikita ko na yung mga mukha niya. So, uh, <laughs> welcome to our photo ops. So, at this, this is our end of the webinar. And hopefully, masaya naman kayo dito. So, pasok lang kayo. Open na yung cameras nyo. Para, uh, so, we can also close our event. So, sa pa. So, ilan tayo dito? 3, 6, 9, uh, 11. So, nasa na yung ibang uh, ating mga attendees? So, andito na. nag na sila. Ayan. So, thank you for attending our webinar. And uh, again, Para sa data privacy natin, we'll also share this to our social media pages para ma-feature kayo, no? para mas tosaya. So, since um, may dadagdag pa, ayan, may dumagdag pa. So, ayan, may nakikita akong naka-PE uniform. <laughs> and, ayan, so mukhang okay na rin naman tayo. So, again, thank you. So, let's take a screenshot. So, I'll count down naman. So, five. Four, three, two, one. Smile. Ayan. And our last picture. So get your best wacky out. So peace side. Wacky kayo. So again, I'll count down. So five, four, three, two, one. Ayan. Sa mga hindi nakapag, um, nakapag open na camera, it's fine. Also, thank you for joining our photo op. And um, let's continue our webinar para matapos na rin to. So I'll ask the technical to open our... Ayan. So can I get a next slide, please? So ayan na nga. Ayan na yung pinaka-conclusion natin. Siyempre, hindi mo awal. Uh, again, uh, this is the end of our webinar. Hopefully, you can use every tip and bit of information to your advantage in your stay in APC as we still continue in transitioning to online classes. So this is your host, Seth Kendall Monar, signing off, hoping you have a great day and thank you for attending our webinar and stay safe from COVID-19. This is a message from APC Microsoft community hoping for you to join us in our journey in this academic year. Wait out for our org fair para makasali kayo sa aming organization. So thank you, goodbye, salamat sa pag-attend ng webinar. Also, answer our evaluation form para mag mapaganda talaga yung event namin. Ayan. Thank you for the reactions. Hoping masaya, naging masaya yung experience nyo for today. Bye-bye. Ingat kayo. Ayan. Again, yung social media natin. You can get an update for that and also our forms. Ayan, sinasend na ng ating mga moderators. So, at again, goodbye. Stay safe sa inyo lahat. Ayan, thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Ayan. Thank you. Thank you, Alea. Thank you, Lemuel. Ayan. Bye-bye.
Ayan, so thank you. So, magli-leave na ako ng ating webinar.